Great, Justin. Today we're going to assemble a semi timber frame shed. Now it's, it's pretty simple. I've gone through the instructions. However, I'm not the most competent handyman in any, any respect. So I've got Keith who can give us a hand. Come on over. Yeah, Justin, how are you today? Good, mate. I'm really yeah. How are you? Good. Now you've been doing this for a while, haven't you? Yeah, last decade. Yep. Last decade. Yep. So you've probably learned a, a tip or two to make things oh, good. Oh, sure have in that time, yes. Yep, yep. So this shed, how long do you think it's going to take it's us? It's two and a half for us, it's two and a half to three hour job. Right, when I say how something you, because if I was involved, it's probably a six hour job. Oh, well, yeah, that would be correct. Yeah. Two, two and a half, three hours is just yeah. long enough to chill down some beers. I'll go put them in the fridge, fruity for okay. afterwards, yep. and leave you to it. Okay, have fun, catch you later. Right, we're going to crack into the shed now. Okay? Righto, so while Keith gets on with it, I'll talk you through what he's doing. First of all, you want to open the box and grab the instruction manual. On the first page, you'll find a few important things to check before you start. Ideally, for your assembly session, you want a nice, flat, clear area with a bit of space. Someone to help out, and of course, favourable weather. You'll also need the appropriate safety gear and the tools required to get the job done, which are all in the instruction manual. Some of the other handy tools are vice grips, saw horses, and a level or straight edge. Turn the page and you'll find the parts list. Check they're all in good shape and that nothing is missing. It's helpful to group them into door, side wall, back wall, front wall, and roof parts. Then clear your work area. Right, time to assemble the door. This is easy to do at a comfortable height. Lay out your door sheets so the narrow pans are on each side. You then want to attach the top, bottom, side flashings, making sure the narrow side is on the front of the door. Right, then drill and rivet the corners and centres with the sides getting additional rivets in between. Then through the rear side of the flashing, then one rivet in the centre. Flip the door over and rivet the corners ensuring you pull them in to get a tight fit. Line up your door braces so they slot nicely into the corners and they overlap in the centre. Then drill and rivet from below so the rivet heads are on the front side of the door. This won't matter for those covered by the flashings, of course. Now you want to add the hinges. Open them out and fix them to the side of the door where the braces meet the corners. 60mm from the top and bottom and one in the centre. That's the door mostly done. You can finish the door completely if you want, but we're adding the finishing touches later. Time to assemble the walls. We're going to do the back wall first, so grab the correct timber top and bottom plates, remembering that red is for roof, green is for ground. If you're working on a soft surface, it pays to put down a couple of boards to give you something solid to work on and use another timber plate in the middle to support the sheets when riveting. Lay your sheets out and use a pair of vice grips to hold them together while you're riveting them. Measuring from the bottom, put a rivet one third and two thirds up the sheet. Now to attach the sheets to the timber plates. Always do the top plate first. The outside of the timber should be flush with the end of the sheet and the last ridge should be over the corner of the timber. So there's about 10 to 15 millimetre of overhang. Fix with a 30 mil clout. Repeat at the other end, then add a nail in the centre. If the timber is sitting a bit proud, hold the work down and give it some gentle persuasion with a hammer until it's lined up with the sheets. Before you attach the bottom timber plate, you need to decide if you want to raise it. This is a good option if you've laid a concrete pad, as it'll make the sheets overhang the edge for better waterproofing. To do this, simply deduct 30 mil from the measurements in the instruction book for every wall. As we're placing the shed on the ground, we won't be raising the base plate. We'll just use the measurements as per the instruction. Make sure you measure this from the correct edge of the timber plate, and it is critical to get right. Remember, the outside of the last rib lines up with the end of the timber. If you find the sheet sticks out further than this at the other end, pull it in until it does line up. Put your weight on it and nail it down. The resulting bulge will flatten out when you begin nailing off the sheets. Do this both top and bottom, and that is the back wall done. The side walls are much the same. Make sure the cutouts in the timber are facing the correct way, then lay out your sheets. As this is a lean-to shed, the top of the sheets angle up from the back to the front. And you want the sheets to overlap from front to back, as this looks better when you look down the side of your shed. Rivet the sheets together as before. Attach the top plate 
at the ends and center, then measure and attach the bottom plate in the same way before nailing off fully. For the front wall, check the timber cutouts are the correct way, then rivet the sheets together and just tack them into the top plate as they may need adjusting. Attach the door jam, lining it up with the top of the timber plate. And if it's on the corner of the shed, make sure you have 15 millimeters overhanging the edge for the side wall cladding to slide into. Measure and attach the bottom plate at both ends, then fix the other door jam. To fit the door, position it so it sits 20 mil below the top of the top timber plate. But for a skillion or gable, as the roof slopes down to the front, you will want it to sit closer to the bottom or else the door will catch on the spouting. Attach each hinge with one rivet, then test the door to check it fits nicely between the jams and the hinges swing freely. Adjust if needed, and then fit the remaining rivets and nail off the sheets. That's all the walls are done. Now it's time to put them up. Start with two adjacent walls, slot together the timber cutouts then rivet the sheets at the top and bottom. Make sure the front wall sheets overlap the sides and the sides overlap the back. Repeat this until the walls are upright. Once they are, use a square to square up the corners and then fix each with two 40mm screws. Then fit the remaining rivets in the corners at the same height as you did on the walls. Time to put on the roof. And like the walls, it starts with riveting together the joints. As this is a small shed, Keith is doing this in place. But for a bigger shed, you might want to do it on the ground, as it can be difficult to reach some areas. Also note that clear roof panels always sit on top of steel sheets. Make sure the ribs of the roof and walls line up. Measure the front overhang as per the instructions, and then drill and attach each corner of the roof to the top timber plate using 50mm clouts. Measure and mark the roof sheets above the top timber plate on each rib, drill and attach using 50mm roofing screws. If you don't have a clear panel to see the timber, you can push your ruler hard against the cladding then add 20mm and you'll be close to the centre of the timber when drilling and screwing. Grab your barge flashings and peel off the protective film. Line up the diagonal end with the front of the shed and rivet to the side walls and the roof. Do the same with the front spouting riveting it to the ribs in the roof sheet. Finish by completing all the riveting. Now Keith will add the finishing touches to the door mark and drill the pad bolt support, then attach the door. The pad bolt should then be lined up to the edge of the door and attached, and the bracket attached to the jam. Complete the riveting of the door braces, drilling from the back through the pan to the cladding and riveting through from the front. And that's the shed complete. If you've got a floor kit to add, space the joists evenly and nail in. Lay down your first boards, making sure you mark where the joists are, then chuck in the rest and button them up tightly. On some models, you may need to rip down a board, but in this case, the boards fit perfectly. The last two just need a stomp and wedge them in place. Make your joist lines with a string or straight edge, then nail them down with 50mm nails. Two per board in each joist. And you're done. Just before you celebrate, don't open that beer yet, make sure you wash down the shed to remove any metal swarf, which may cause rusting or pitting over time. Now visit juratuff.co.nz backslash warranty, register your warranty with your shed, so you know it's looked after for years to come. Yeah. Grab your tour tough sheet, get into it. Cheers. Cheers, everybody.